Welcome to day one of this two-day fitness business mentorship. I hope that several of you are going to be able to get on live and join me because I'm going to be talking about the 10 principles of a renegade fitnesspreneur. That's right, I said renegade. I'm gonna be dropping down 10 different principles that I believe are the staple, the governing principles of a renegade fitnesspreneur. And now, you might not have heard that fitnesspreneur word before. I'm kind of stealing it from my husband because it's a part of his brand. But a fitnesspreneur is somebody that wants to be their own boss, build their own business, build their own brand, own that baby in the fitness industry. And renegade, why is it a renegade, right? Because renegades do things differently. They look at the world differently, they evaluate their moves differently, and they go hard. Harder than most people, right? It's hard to be a renegade, you gotta go off on your own track, you gotta do your own thing. Being a renegade is really difficult. But I think that if you decide to be more like a renegade fitnesspreneur, you will be more successful. You actually be happier, I guarantee it. So tonight I'm so excited to be tapping the gas on your ambition. That's what I hope I do tonight because I'm excited, I got a lot to share. I'm hoping that tonight and then tomorrow as well, that I not, not only give you these principles that open your eyes to different ways and better ways that you can make choices in your business as you grow, but so that you build that business you love, but also a lifestyle that you love. I can't tell you how quickly I drove myself into the ground in my fitness business. And early on in my career, man, I was going hard, but I was going in the wrong direction. I was building a career that did not bring me a lifestyle that I wanted. So tonight, I wanna help you avoid that. I wanna share some principles that I've learned over the last 12 years that are gonna help you to avoid some of those mistakes. And it took me a long time to get here. Most of you might know me, but I am the CEO of my own fitness brand, Sexy Confident Life, right? I've created the Sexy Confident Woman Formula, which is a four-week women's empowerment course online. I'm a certified high-performance coach through the Brendan Burchard Group. I don't know if you've heard of Brendan Burchard. He's like the king of high performance. I'm one of his certified coaches. It's more of a life coaching um, style of training and coaching people. I'm the host of Pop Sugar Fitness. Give it up, people. Come on. You've seen it. You've seen it. Um, and I'm also a Beachbody coach. I've built a successful business at, in that network marketing business. And it's taken me a very long time to stand here in front of you guys and share these principles of success because I didn't always feel successful. It took a long freaking time to be happy with my career, happy with the direction I was going, making the money I want to make, and living the lifestyle I wanted. Because I don't know about you guys out there, but being in the fitness industry ain't easy. It takes a lot of you know sweat and tears and work to gain some freedom, right? To build some income, especially if you wanna be your own boss. So you're in the right place. You guys are here, not just because, you know, one thing I wanna make sure I point out is that right now you're in one of my team pages where we usually open up an invite to join our Beachbody team, Team Believe and Achieve, but that's not what it's about tonight. Tonight is something completely different, but I wanted you to come into my team page because I wanted all of my teammates and I wanted their friends and others in the fitness industry that want to learn about different ways of growing online. I want everyone to be a part of that. So tonight isn't about inviting you to my team. Maybe if that happens, great. But tonight is about growing and expanding your current fitness business and your brand online. It's about if you're a fitness enthusiast and you're like, I want to build my own fitness business, but I'm not a trainer yet. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Then you're in the right place because you're going to learn about the steps that it takes and a lot of the principles that it's going to take and require from you to be successful in this industry, right? So I wanted to make sure that I told you the three different reasons I created this training. One is that I want to pay it forward. I don't know about you, but I have been blessed 
blessed with such incredible mentorship in my life. I don't know how it happened. It must have just been my energy or my drive or whatever it was, but I've been able to work with guys like Todd Durkin and Brett Klicka and my husband Vito LaFada and Tony Horton. In the industry of fitness, they have led me. They have helped me develop as a leader, as an ambitious business owner, somebody that really had the drive to go out there and do her thing. So I felt blessed to have that mentorship and I want to keep paying that forward because what goes around comes around, baby. And I'm still looking for more mentorship, right? I hope you are too. I hope that if you're here and you're getting some mentorship from me, you pay it forward right to the next person. Don't hold these secrets inside. The second reason I created this is because I've got a thousand hours and a thousand dollars of invested knowledge right? Over the last several years of my fitness career, I've attended seminars by some of the best business leaders and, you know, marketing experts, Ryan Dice from Digital Marketer, Dan Kennedy, who was like the copywriting genius of marketing and all of that. I'm, I've been to Brendan Burchard's events, High Performance, Experts Academy. I've been to, you know, Jeff Walker's product launch formula. I've joined masterminds. I've been a part of a lot of things and I've invested a lot of time and a lot of money and I want to share it, right? Because you know what? I want to build a better world and I need more fitness professionals successful in what they do. So they're making money to sustain the message. That's what it's all about because if you guys are broke and you want to retire or you don't make it in the fitness biz, guess what? Guess who fails? Guess who doesn't get help? The millions of people that need you, right? If you're not successful and you don't love what you do and you're not getting your message out there, guess who loses? Not just you. The world loses. I believe we're in the best industry that there is. I'm so freaking passionate about the fitness industry. I hope you are too. That's why you're here, right? So, you know, lastly, I created this training because I am always, always looking to partner with more ambitious, motivated entrepreneurs. You know, everybody that's in this group, I got a mastermind of coaches. We are a mastermind and we are building our brands, our businesses online. We get on calls once a week and hash out ideas, develop skills, better social media, how to market, how to get our message, how to tell better stories. That's an environment I love and I want to keep building and growing. So, you know, by the end of this, you might say, hey, Anna, what's up with your team? And I will let you know, but only if it's a fit for you. That's not why I created this mentorship, but I am always looking to partner with awesome people. And if that happens to be you, great. But you know what I don't do, guys? I don't wipe butts and I don't drag people through mud. I provide knowledge and choice. I believe that we all have to make choices in our life. I've made a lot of bad choices. And I've learned, I've learned a lot of big lessons from those choices. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's up to you what you do with your life. All I care about is that you make choices that lead you towards the life you love, the life you desire and help you build a career that allows you to do that. You know, it's hard to build a career you love, never mind a lifestyle you love. Let's do both. There's no reason we can't. So let's get started because by the end of this, by the end of this two days, and I'm going to touch back with you guys on Saturday, but at the end of these two days, you're going to have a few things. You're going to have a list of action steps that are going to help you become a stronger entrepreneur, like action steps. It's not just about what you hear. It's about what you do with what you hear, right? So a list of action steps. You're going to feel more confident in what you're doing in the fitness industry and why. You're also going to have better clarity. So you can be confident, but usually confidence comes with having clarity in why you're building the business you are. What's it all for, right? Are you confident in what you're doing? Why? I want you to go away with that as well. You're also going to understand the big opportunities, the big opportunities to take advantage of, to leverage your hard work. A lot of us are busting ass. We're busting ass every day. Man, we're in the freaking customer service business of human beings, right? Most of us that work in this industry, we are busting our butts to help people. I want to show you the opportunities to leverage that hard work. So you're going to take that away too. You're also, last thing, you're going to avoid very, you're going to avoid mistakes, right? Avoid some mistakes that 
are gonna cost you time and money. Like I said, I've made them myself, and this mentorship is to open your eyes to maybe some of those mistakes I've made so you don't make the same ones. Sound good? Is everybody ready? Can I get a high five? All right, all right, I'll see you some love. I see Ashley's on, I see Stephanie's on, I see Chelsea's on, I see Francis, I see, okay, Becky, what's up, everybody? So, I want you to grab a pen and paper. This is a mentorship, you know, imagine this is like a live class. And I'm up in front of the stage and I'm at the podium, but you know, instead um, I'm just in shorts and I'm in my office and I'm chilling. But I want you guys to take this seriously. Get out a pen and paper if you can. If you're home, take some notes because you're going to get some action steps and things to take away from tonight. I'm going to go through the first five or maybe six principles, depending on how, how the time is looking. And there's a total of 10, so tomorrow I'll finish them off. But starting out, the first principle I want to talk to you guys about is actually having principles, having governing principles that allow you to make the best decisions when it comes to the strategies and the tactics that you make in your business. So as a businesswoman, I never really thought about this. I never thought, what are the principles that I run my business by or my life by? You know, what helps me make a decision? Do I do this or do I do that? You know, whether it's writing an email, or putting up a social media post, or endorsing a product, or you're starting a podcast, or you're creating a new program, or you're maybe considering a partnership with somebody, or you wanna invest in a course, or you wanna go to a conference. What helps you make those decisions are your principles, right? So first and foremost, have them. I'm gonna share 10 of my core principles with you, and I might have a few other ones that maybe are less important, uh, you know, empowering or whatnot, but they're valuable to me. But I'm giving you 10. Maybe you're going to find some that you like and some that you're, you know, going to change or whatnot. But first and foremost, if you're going to build your own business, if you have your own business, I know that I invited some studio owners, people that have successful brands, they're already building programs online. I'm so freaking happy that they're here. But at the end of the day, you can have all that and still not be governing your business with principles that you've really sat down and thought about. You know, so when you make decisions, you're making the right decisions based on where you want to take your business, where you want to take your life. That's number one. I think that's so vitally important and I don't think enough people think that way. Because guess what? Strategies and tactics change every day. You talk, I mean, who follows Gary Vee online? Uh-huh, he's amazing. But you know how quickly tactics and strategies change in this growing world? Quickly. So those are gonna change. Maybe before you were doing a lot of email marketing, maybe now you're doing more direct messaging through Facebook. Who cares as long as the principle for the reason why you're doing it and what the outcome you're trying to create is the same. You can evolve. So that's number one, deal. So by the end of this, you're gonna have 10. You can tell me if you got some more, you can share them, you can evolve them, you can change them, whatever you wanna do. But get your principles in place. The second one, is to reject all limitations. Write this down. Reject all limitations. I want you to think about that for a moment. Are you accepting your own excuses or accepting your own self-limiting beliefs when it comes to taking action? We all do, but we gotta be aware of it. We got to be aware of when we're making excuses for why we can't do something, making excuses that we're not taking action to do that project or go online or do it live or put out a program, whatever it might be, there are excuses and self-limiting beliefs holding us back, holding you back potentially from being more successful, from reaching the dreams that you have in front of you. It's really not easy. You got to go out and get them. Can you imagine? Can you imagine just right now? Just think about it. What are you not doing right now with more ambition, with more motivation, with more conviction right now in your business because you're using an excuse like time? You're using an excuse like I don't have the following. You're using the excuse that I don't know enough. Whatever it might be, decide now that you'll make time. Decide now that you'll learn that skill, that you'll grow that network. Decide that everything 
is figure outable. My husband uses that all the time. I love that. Reject all limitations because you know what? We can't limit our vision. We can't live in our vision for, you, you have a vision. What do you see yourself doing? What do you see yourself creating and building for your life? You can't limit that vision based on current circumstances or current knowledge or even past experiences. Maybe you failed before and it's still freaking you out. So you're like, I don't know if I want to do it again because I could fail again. Forget about it. We all fail, right? We all fail. If I used an example, you know, when I was young growing up, I grew up in a house of six kids. My mom raised us on welfare. She worked part time. We we're just like a total dysfunctional freaking household. By, like, I guess that's kind that I'm using that, okay? Dysfunctional is the kind word to say what was going on in my house. Brothers in jail, all sorts of stuff, no money, no Christmas presents, whatever. And you know what? When it came time to think about my vision for my life, I had a way bigger vision than my current circumstances. If I had let my current circumstances define my vision for my life, I would have been a server for the rest of my life or I would have gotten married and just had babies. I wouldn't have gone out and been an influencer. I wouldn't have gone out and gone to college, but guys, guess what? I said, no, I got a bigger vision for my life. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to bust tables while I go to school. I'm going to pay for it on my own. I'm going to figure it out, not be limited. And I let that be a continuous thread throughout my life. What about you? Ask yourself this question right now, because are you limiting your vision based on your past failures or your current circumstances, or your current knowledge. You're here right now learning because you want to grow. Are you doing that in every area of your life where you feel like you don't know enough? Oh, I don't know how to create a website, or I don't know how to write a blog, or I don't know how to um, you know, start a podcast, or you know, whatever it might be. I don't know how to create a product. I don't know how to go online. Whatever. It's figure outable, right? So do you believe in your ability to figure it out? That's what you got to ask yourself. And one of your beliefs, one of your principles has got to be reject all limitations. Most of it is made up. We all got the same amount of time in a day. Yeah, you know what, you guys? I got so much time. I really got nothing to do. Like, I'm totally free. Said no one ever. Said no successful person ever. Right? Right? And hey, everybody's busy. We decide what to prioritize in our lives. We make time. But that's not the only limitation people use as excuses, right? Hey, I'm preaching to the choir probably in this group, right? I hope I am. But is that a principle that you live by? Are you catching yourself? Hmm? Are you catching yourself making excuses, self-limiting beliefs, holding you down? Go out there, right? Go out there and freaking take action. Because if you decided right now, I'm going to just take more action than I've ever taken in my life. I'm not going to let these excuses or these beliefs that I can't do it hold me down. Think about what you would start doing right now and go do that. Deal? All right, you got an action step right there. Number three, environment matters. Environment. I think we all know that phrase. You are the equivalent of the five closest people to you. Everybody's heard it, and if you haven't taken this real seriously yet, it's time. Environment is probably the biggest influence on you. I, I remember I was in 2005, I was a young trainer. I had just moved to San Diego from Boston out of college, and I was just ready to just you know, be free. I was so done with school. I got my master's. I was like freaking burnt out. And it was, you know, it was good. I found a good job and everything. But every time, you know, at the end of the day, I was like, ah, oh, I'm just going to hang out with the local buddies around town. We're going to go drink. We're going to go hang out at the beach. I don't want to do anything, right? I wasn't motivated to do diddly squat outside what I had to do when I was in the studio. Which, good thing in the studio, I had positive influencers and leaders that were kind of showing me the way and guiding me a little bit. But when I left that studio, I didn't want to do anything. 
I wasn't motivated to do anything like build a website, write blogs, um, you know, create my DVD, do YouTube videos. I started to eventually, but I resisted because of my environment. My friends, they didn't want to do anything. They're stoners. They were like hanging out at the beach doing up. It's like that was who I was hanging out with. No wonder it took me so long to grow. So you got to ask yourself that same question. Like, what is my work life like? What's the environment like at work? What are my friends like? Do I hang out with my friends a lot? Are they influencing my decisions, my motivation, my ambition? I got to tell you right now, in this, in this community, in my mastermind group, in my coaching programs, it is all motivation. It is all drive. It's high performance. Because that's the energy that I want around me. And so I attract my tribe. And we thrive off of each other, right? It's like a free freaking mastermind, which I've paid a lot of money for masterminds. It's not cheap, right? If you're not a part of a circle like that, get in one. Be a part of something bigger than yourself. And people that push you, be the dumbest one in the room. When was the last time you invested in being in an environment that pushed you, that challenged you? New jobs are like that. You get a new job, you're like, oh God, I'm so nervous, right? But it's good. It creates growth within you. So you got to ask yourself that question. Is your environment reflective of your ambitions? Ask yourself, you know, am I in an environment that reflects the ambitions I have for my life and what I want to create, how I want to grow, the career I want to make. Surround yourself in that and you will exponentially grow. And you got to eliminate the freaking negative Nancy's and the people in your life that are bringing you down, telling you you can't. Boo hoo on them. You don't need it. Environment matters. So everywhere you go, even when you like meet up with girlfriends for dinner, if it's a freaking, if it's just like a total, um, you know, like, oh my God, my life is so this and I can't stand my boyfriend and my husband's always like that. It's like, guess what? Guess what, friends? Level up. Go do something about it. Go learn. Go engage in something else. Don't lower yourself down to the lowest common denominator of people in your life. Right? It matters. Your success depends on it, guys. I'm not lying. It depends on it. All right. Number four. Are you ready to move on? I'm not hearing any. I'm not hearing any feedback yet. So no questions yet. I'll wait till the end to answer questions. So number four. This one I think is very valuable. I think you're gonna love what I'm gonna bring at you now. Be evolutionary. Right? If you think about it, nothing big is what it started out to be. We have to evolve, grow, and be flexible. If we get stuck, if we get caught thinking in old ways or not keeping our eyes open to the changes in the world, we're going to get left behind. Is anybody... I'm watching right now The Defiant Ones. Just finished it with Dr. Dre and, you know... um, Jimmy Ivone and all this stuff when they were going through the whole process of creating records and Dr. Dre's story is so inspiring and I'm just watching it being like that guy is the most evolutionary guy that I've ever like watched. I've seen or heard their story. Think about it. He goes from the streets to building records and then they make a lot of money, they sign a lot of people, go through ups and downs, but then Napster comes along. Napster starts giving away music for free, totally destroying the record company. The money is just like, no more. People are getting music for free. So what does Dre do? Makes headphones. It's like, oh, I'm in the music industry, I'll make headphones. And then they sell it to Apple for like $3 billion. Now he's making movies. It's like he has evolved. Yes, he's still great at what he does, making music. But he evolved with the times. He heard and he listened and he felt what was going on. And he was flexible. He made choices. We have to do the same in the fitness industry. Right? I mean, think about it. You've got technology. Okay, technology, for instance, is changing everything for the fitness industry. 
It is not what it was 20 years ago, right? Think about 20 years ago. It wasn't even like Facebook, right? You weren't marketing anything on social media. But when you think about it, yes, DVDs, they were big back in the day. I created a couple of them, you know, but now look at Netflix. Everything's online. People want to get it from their smartphone. They want to get it from their smart TV. They want it downloadable. It's streaming now. You know, Beachbody even knows it. Beachbody said, oh, you know what? We've been selling these infomercials and selling, you know, DVDs. And now everybody's getting their stuff online. They're downloading it. It's more of a global economy. Guess what? Let's do ours so that it's streaming to every household. They are evolving. They're evolutionary. Otherwise, they'll get left behind because people aren't going to buy DVDs anymore. And you got to think about that in your business. Are you building a business based on, well, are you building a business for the future or for the past? And I ask fit pros this all the time, you know, because I know that a lot of you on here probably own studios right now already. So I'm not saying that, you know, you know, drop your studio or whatnot, but guess what? If you're not a studio owner right now, why is that the way you want to move? in this economy, at this day and age, with a global market. Why would you confine your market to a 10 to 20 mile radius if you have a global market at your disposal in this economy right now? That's a question I, do, I, that's a question I challenge you with. And if you own a studio, most of the studio owners want to start expanding into the online space so that you can then scale your business. Because you see where things are going. My husband Vito sold his studio four years ago because it actually failed. A big fitness company came in and gave free daycare to all the moms for four hours a day. The membership was cheaper than a freaking, um, you know, couple weeks at his small little pop gym. And it just killed his business. He had to sell it. He had to get out of it. So you got to be aware of what's happening in the world and be evolutionary, especially if you're going to be your own boss and you're going to be running your own business. I think about this too when it comes to people that say, Anna, I want to build a website. I say, okay, well, what are you going to do with that website? Well, I just want to have like, you know, a couple things on it and I want people to like be able to find me. And I say, have you been paying attention to what's going on? Because Nobody goes to a website. People don't hang out on websites. They hang out on social media, right? You got to be actually directing them from social media to your website, but where they're hanging out is where you want to be. That's where you want to be putting your stuff. That's where you want to be doing it. If you already have a website now, awesome. You're ahead of the game, but a lot of people go invest thousands like this one. Lots of money I've invested in websites only to do nothing. Websites serve two purposes, to collect leads and to sell programs, to sell products, right? And if you don't have that yet, get your social media jive on. That's technology today. That's looking at the world and understanding that, oh, back in the day, people wanted to build websites first because there wasn't social media. But now there is. And then you start making some money, sure, then you can go ahead and build your website because by then hopefully you'll have some products to sell and you'll have ways to generate more leads into your business. But think about the way the world is working today and be evolutionary. Be willing to change. So with just those few examples, I wanted to make that just one of those, one of those things that asking you, are you stuck in old ways of thinking? Or are you being evolutionary? Are you looking at the way the world is today so that your business grows for the future, not from the past? Awesome. Okay, number five. This kind of ties right into being evolutionary. And that is the, the most dangerous number in business is one. The most dangerous number in business is one. My husband Vito taught this to me very early on when I met him that the most dangerous number in business is one. That's one revenue stream. 
That's one service. That's one program. That's one person doing all the work. Anything with the number one in business is dangerous. Why? Because you guys, we've got to build success, right? And you can't do it with one revenue stream, one product, because you got to protect yourself and you got to be able to scale. Scaling is the one thing I had to learn. I was like, hmm, what the hell is that? I remember I met Vito. I met Vito uh, in Santa Monica. I took him out for a drink because I saw him present an idea and I wanted him to mentor me. Yes, it was like teacher crush for sure. And when he came up to Santa Monica, I took him out for a drink and I met with him and he started asking me what I do. Like, what do I do for a living? And I was like, well, I'm a fitness director. I teach fitness classes. I have personal clients. I host Pop Sugar Fitness and I own an LLC fitness company uh, for kids. He was like, whoa, whoa, girl. Okay, you got a lot going on. Good for you. Holy crap. So how are you feeling about all that? And I was like, oh, I'm tired. I got no freedom. I feel like I'm freaking gonna die. I'm just looking for my break in life. When is it gonna get easier? How much more do I have to stack on my plate in order to be successful? Do you ever feel that way? Do you ever feel like, oh my God, if I do, if I have one more client or if I take one more thing or if I hire one more trainer, if I have to open another studio or it's like, when does it get easier? When do I get more freedom and more money at the same time? And that's when he taught me about scale. He said, well, you got to figure out how you can leverage your time so you make more money than just the hours you work. You're still trading dollars for hours, girl. So you're never gonna get any freedom and more money at the same time. You've gotta scale your business. So he made me look at how I was leveraging my, my you know, education, my content. He says, oh, you're making meal plans for your clients and you're doing all this. And I said, yeah, he's like, you should be charging. That's another fee, awesome. He's like, do you promote or advocate for any nutrition supplements you like? And I'm like, no, I don't. And he goes, well, what do you like and what do you use? And at the time I was interviewing with Beachbody to be the next super trainer. I didn't get it, but I was doing their cleanse and trying their Shakeology. So I said, I like the Shakeology stuff. And he was actually in the network. So he said, great, you can market that, have a nutrition store. So he just started showing me how I could maximize. It's called customer value optimization. Right? How can I utilize my skills and all the things I'm giving away for free and earn more so that I'm not just getting paid for the hours I'm in the studio, the hours I'm training my clients? There were so many ways he taught me to scale my business. I'm not going to go into detail on that with this one principle, but look at your business right now and ask yourself, am I making money outside of just the hours I'm working? That's why products are great. That's why online programs are great. That's why having multiple revenue streams are great. Affiliations, right? With different products that you like. So thinking about that scale is like so valuable. It's so important. It's one of the best lessons I've ever learned in business. And you really do only gain freedom when you figure it out. Based on what you want to do, that's why the online business can be so profitable. You know, Vito said to me, he goes, yeah, he's like, <clears throat> I opened a studio and now I just got a bunch of people I got to freaking babysit. You know, he had, they don't care about my studio. They don't like really want to work that hard. I'm the one doing all the marketing. I'm the one doing all the sales. I'm the one freaking sweating and tearing everything I got into this business. But nobody wants to help me out because it's not theirs. That's why he did network marketing, because he could build a team of fitness professionals that gave a shit. They wanted to build their own business. So another way that he leveraged his business coaching and his experience, and that is what I did. I learned from the best. So leveraging, scaling, it's very, very important if you want more freedom and you want to earn more money per hour in your day, right? Because it... I, yeah, I'm telling you. Okay, I could go on forever. All right, we'll keep going. I think I'm going to go through the last one because I'm excited and I'm fired up. I hope you guys are too. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this last one with you. And then tomorrow I'll do four. 
and I'll answer some questions. This last one is to create a process business versus a product business, right? Think about that. Create a process business versus a product business. Think about being in an industry where we're working with people, human beings, going through a transformation of their lives. I mean, there's a lot of people selling products. Stores sell products. A lot of people sell supplements. And it's like, there you go. Go ahead. Good luck. See you later. But that's just a product they're selling. We have to have a process where we can help a person ascend and grow and become their new self, right? We can't just be like one and done. And I want you to think about this because I know that I did it in my career, right? I created a bridal fitness DVD. And with this bridal fitness DVD, I thought it was going to be like, awesome. I did it. Everyone's going to buy it. But with one DVD, what then? What are they going to do after they buy that DVD? How am I going to continuously leverage that customer to keep growing my business and to keep serving that person. They go to my DVD, that's not all they need, right? I've gotta train the person as a whole and I also have to allow that person to ascend so they can continue to grow. So if you think about it, when you only create one program, one product, one service, and you don't really have a process of helping someone get started, help them continue to, 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 to progress, right, and then elevate them, then we're narrowing our, our niche and our market to the person when they're right in that one place in their life. Like they're right here, and that's when we get them, and then we don't get them any other time. Because if they're less, less fit or more fit, we miss them. We need to have a process business. We can have a specific niche, but we got to take them through and ascend and have continuity. Do you have continuity? What happens to your customer after they use your first product? What then? What do you offer? How do you keep them engaged in your community and keep, you know, becoming paying customers? This is the key to having a successful online business especially. I mean, if you have a studio, you got people there re-registering, they're getting their memberships again and whatnot. You got to have the same thing online. You got to create that or leverage it with other tools. I use Beachbody for one of those tools. I also have several products I've created myself that I allow someone to get in and progress and grow. I have masterminds, but I have a process so that I can have optimal Customer value. It's called customer value optimization. You don't just have a customer come in, buy a product, and then they're out. You need them to stay in your community and become loyal followers in your community. That is the key to building a successful business. Vito taught me that as well. He taught me a lot of things, as you might have started to realize. But it's so important because if you want to build that business that's sustainable... You need more than just a product. You need a process. Imagine Apple. Imagine Apple just had like one product. No, they're not selling a product. They have you going for everything because it's all intertwined. It's a whole process. Once you're an Apple user, you're freaking an Apple person. Right? Am I right? Yes. So I want you to ask yourself now, you know, what is my process? What is your process? How do you continue to serve your customer? How do you continue to keep them in ascending and have a continuity with them? So vitally important. Okay, that was six that I went through. You know, first, have those operating governing principles for your business. Reject all limitations. Are you limiting your vision based on your past or current circumstances? Environment matters. Is your environment reflective of your ambitions? Be evolutionary, right? Are you building a business for the future or the past? 
most dangerous number in business is one, you need to protect and scale in order to have the lifestyle that you want in your career. And then create a business that is a process business versus a product business. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna be going through four more, which are so freaking awesome, and I hope you guys will stick around for it. I'll stick around for questions if you guys have any. I really value your time. I'm so happy that you showed up for this because this is the first time I am really starting to teach some of these principles of, of things that I've learned and the ways that I've, they've helped me grow in my career, and I'm excited to get them into the hands of more fitness professionals, more people that want to get that edge, want to know what the hell is going on, why am I stuck, how come this isn't growing, why do I feel like I'm burying myself, because that's how I felt. Before I started diving into business training and becoming a freaking conference junkie and marrying Vito Lafada, which was like an investment in itself, right? Now I have to sit at the dinner table and listen to him to like mm, business talk. But at the end of the day, it's helped me grow and I hope to be that same mentor and friend for you guys to grow as well. So... Thank you so much. I will, I don't see any questions or anything. I want to thank everybody that got to show up. Uh, hopefully, if you didn't get to stick around for the whole one, the whole thing, you can start and, and watch and see if um, there was anything that I said that, you know, hit a chord or, you know, sparked a question because I'll be in here over the next couple days answering questions and um, just keeping the conversation going. Sound good? All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.